Okay, so next I'm going to talk about uh, the magic data model uh, and uh, data uploading. The uh, sort of philosophy behind our data model and its structure, uh, how to search the data model, um, how to format your data for uploading into magic, and then showing how uh, that process works, uh, how you get to where you can make your data public. So I'll go to the live site in a minute, but I just thought this was a clearer way of showing. Uh, we have uh, six hierarchical levels in the magic data model. You go out to the field, you go to uh, location, and then at a site, uh, which in magic has a special meaning. Uh, it means a place where they're uh, you're sampling from something that has a common age and magnetization where you would average things together. So, uh, for example, a lava flow or a sediment horizon at an outcrop or sediment horizon in a core. Uh, then there's samples you take from there, from your site. Uh, then you have possibly specimens that are cut from the samples, and then you make measurements on the specimens. Um, and then those measurements are uh, somehow grouped or averaged into a specimen uh, uh, values. Um, those might be averaged into sample values. And then you might uh, average those into values at the site level, like the paleo intensity or the paleo direction. Uh, and then those are groups into locations and everything can be downloaded uh, from a single contribution. So uh, we have this hierarchy. Uh, and then in the data model, you can go and look at the uh, columns that can be recorded for each table. Um, so uh, and they're grouped by types. And there's a nice color coordinated uh, description of uh, if the table, uh, the column is required. Uh, if it's validated, uh, if there's a controlled vocabulary on that column, and so on. Um, and then there's, if you click on the uh, data column itself, we have even more uh, detailed description uh, of that column. So I will just show that here. So if you go to the data model, <clears throat> Here are those uh, six hierarchical tables. Uh, there's also a table for selection criteria uh, to describe how you decide if <clears throat> uh, a uh, sample has, uh, has a uh, acceptable value for paleo intensity usually uh, or not. And then we have an age table that uh, more describes that any ages uh, of uh, samples or sites um, described in more detail. And then there's a table for images that you can describe any images that you have put into this contribution. Um, so I'll show you how this interface works. Uh, if you click on the sites, you get a list of all of the column names. Uh, here is the description. Here is the, the database name. Uh, it's a, it's a string uh, description uh, and it's a required field. And then if you open that up, uh, there's uh, much more detail about what this column uh, describes and what you should put in for the value. Uh, if you do something, if you click on one that has a uh, vocabulary list, then you have a quick link uh, to those values. Um, so here we have uh, geologic classes, um, mineral classifications. So uh, some of these are, are uh, these vocabulary lists um, are pretty fixed, but other ones, uh, if you find that you need a uh, vocabulary that we don't have included, uh, we can add those quite quickly. Uh, just send me an email and it only takes uh, 10 minutes to add and then uh, a little bit longer to get it back up onto the website. 
So we should be able to do it in a, a day or two. Um, another thing that you, you can do is search. So uh, say you want to uh, describe what plate your, your sites are on uh, and you're wondering where that should, what column that should be. Uh, you can do search up here and it brings up uh, in the locations table, uh, there is a column called plate blocks. And so you can put your, uh, what plate uh, your sites are on. And you click on there, then we have this long list of plates. You find there's one that's missing or a new plate. Uh, you can send your suggestion to us and we can decide if that's uh, makes sense to add. Um, and uh, one more column that I wanted to point out is we have this external results column in the sites table. And uh, we've added this recently um, where uh, in many cases, it would be very useful to have other data, <coughs> data measurements uh, that are related to the horizon uh, or site uh, that you've uh, sampled uh, to be uh, referenced directly to the magnetic results. So especially in say uh, cores where you're doing susceptibility, uh, maybe directions, and you have these magnetic results, but you're also getting oxygen isotopes, carbon isotopes, and so on. Uh, you can put those carbon and oxygen isotope values right into the column of the site. So they will be directly uh, correlated to one another and easily searchable and so on. So uh, this is a, a, a very useful thing uh, for cores. And if you have any, um, uh, we have restrictions, you know, this is a controlled vocabulary of these ex external result types, but we're happy to add more. Um, okay, so that's uh, the data model. Um, next, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, uploading, uploading data magic. So for, <clears throat> for new contributions, uh, to magic going forward, we really encourage uh, people to have uh, put in measurement data. So uh, measurement data uh, really allows people to uh, see what has been done uh, to uh, see what has been <clears throat> been done in the paper and make makes the uh, the paper reproducible at a much higher level. Uh, Lisa is going to show you how you can use uh, PMAGPI and uh, Jupyter Notebooks to uh, make uh, your, your, your science even more reproducible. And that's sort of the, the future, I think, is having a process where uh, your data can be easily rerun and reanalyzed by others. Um, so to be reanalyzed, you really need the measurement level data especially for paleo intensity, that's very important. So uh, we're happy to work with labs to uh, uh, develop workflows um, that uh, allows easy upload into the uh, magic database. So you want to have your workflow set up to that when you do, when you're done with your analysis or journey analysis, there are stages where you can easily create, uh, the magic data file format for uploading. So we've worked with a few groups to do this, and I'm going to show you uh, some of that some of that work. So uh, we've uh, recently uh, finished a project with the MIT group, where uh, we uh, I created uh, some scripts to take their uh, squid uh, microscopy data and uh, take their data output and uh, create magic 
file uh, formatted files uh, that they can uh, they can upload. So um, first off, uh, you know, there's a variety of ways you can do this. So if you have your own paleomagnetic analysis software, uh, you can uh, write an export script that goes directly into the uh, magic file format. So I see here today, actually, uh, Pierre Roperch has uh, been uploading data. Uh, we were working with him for the last few months um, and uh, went back and forth and uh, described the data model with him and discussed things. And now he is software. He, he has his own custom analysis software. He's created an export to magic function in his software. And so now uh, all the data that he's had in the past and any future data, he has an easy way of exporting that and then uploading it. Um, so that's one way to go. And we're, we are happy to help you with that. Another way is that if you have a standard file format that comes out of your machines and your analysis software, then we can, uh, and, you don't, and you don't want to write uh, a direct file, a magic file export into that software or you're using somebody else's software, then we can create translation scripts uh, that will convert all the data into the magic file format. And so the key to that is um, setting up uh, translation scripts that can do that in just a single step, because you don't want to have a whole bunch of multiple steps. You want to have it all automated. Uh, so um, here I'm going to show you uh, with the MIT group, we set up a file format that was going to take all of their data. So what, they, what this uh, instrument is, is uh, you take a, a zircon and uh, you mount it and then you measure with a teeny little magnetic loop and you scan over uh, the zircon measuring the B field. And then from that B field, uh, you can model the actual magnetic field of that grain. So the data that you want to record is this map of the B field, and then also this model of the grain field. And then this, this, this grain is demagnetized and mapped over and over. So it's like a, a standard demag, um, but you're, 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 create, you're measuring the field in a sort of um, different way. So the way we decided to set up uh, their data was um, each sample. So there's a big rock they get in Australia. They chop it up. They get the zircons out. So for each sample, uh, they have a large number of zircons. And so we group them by, by sample. And then for each sample, we have uh, three data directories. Uh, one is the squid data. So in here, there's the uh, X, Y values uh, when they're scanning. Uh, there's the uh, parameters of the how they fit that scanned field into a map of, uh, of the magnetic field of the grain. And then there's this dot in file, which has metadata on that scan, like the distance between steps and uh, how long it took and so on. So that data is all in here. Then they uh, created the, they have, um, there's this uh, Caltech uh, rapid uh, machine uh, for paleomagnetic measurements. And they have one there at MIT. And so they use that as their uh, file format and they take their model data and create these CIT files so they can look at them in their analysis software. And so we can take those um, and create measurement, uh, magic measurement files from those. We have a program that already does that. So I can reuse that program um, and in a, a program that's also reading in all of this information. Uh, and then they uh, send a bunch of images that uh, are the maps so this is, you know, 
an image of one DMAG step on one grain. Uh, and this is the, the data that's in the magic file format, but they also have these uh, images so that people can look at them in PDF form. And so uh, we agreed on this file format and then I wrote uh, scripts to um, take that data and create uh, a files for uploading into magic. So, and these scripts are in pmagpy. And uh, so these, I work with uh, Kyle Borlina at MIT to sort of get all these details worked out. Uh, but also Jay Shaw uh, has started using those scripts on his own. Uh, he has um, got some data and he just recently sent me some uh, uh, these data sets uh, to help upload. Um, well, they're very large, so we're still working uh, with the API to, to be able to do these uh, on our own. Uh, but uh, I'm going to just show you how that works. So I'm just going to do this in this test directory because these are uh, hundreds of megabytes of, of files. And so running the script would take uh, about an hour or so. Um, here was just a test one where I had uh, uh, two two zircons and, uh, and I'll show you what each command is like for each sample. So uh, in pbagpy, uh, there's this translation script called squid m underscore magic. So going from squid microscopy to magic file format. And then you can put in all the metadata that you need to uh, create the magic files in a single command. So if you have just one, one uh, sample, you can just run this and it'll create all of your uh, magic formatted files. If you have multiple, if you have multiple sam uh, samples, then uh, there's a script called run, make sure I'm in the right place. So you go into the, the directory with the, uh, you, where you've created those commands with the metadata and you run. So this is a pmagpy script that you can run uh, if you have the pmagpy installed. And so what this does is um, uh, it runs the, the two commands, which are these uh, squid magic converters uh, to take all that information. And uh, what it's doing is it's processing that uh, and creating a magic uh, compact magic file formats uh, for each of the zircons and uh, all the measurement information and the samples, the sites and so on. Uh, and then uh, eventually it will combine those all together uh, for each sample and then this run multiple samples, uh, combines those all together uh, into one magic file. So this is gonna take about a minute, but I think it's good to, to show how you wanna be able to do this just in one step. Um, and so if they later um, do another measurement here uh, on, uh, on another zircon in their study, then they can just add that to this, this data file and run the script again. And it's very simple. And it's not a reanalysis and you don't have to think about doing a lot of things by hand. And it makes the workflow uh, much more easy and you'll be not uh, feeling, uh, have that feeling of dread like, oh, I don't wanna make more data because now it's gonna be a lot more work to get it, get it ready. So now the script's done. And uh, it's created this magic file here um, and uh, two directories that have all of the measurements and the images, which will be very large. So they need to be uploaded separately at the moment, um, but we'll have that fixed soon. And so now I'm gonna use this uh, magic file format in file to show you how the upload works. Um, so if you go to the upload tool, 
You can just drag and drop here. So for each table, uh, you, for each table, I, uh, the magic file format, uh, it knows um, that it's a magic text file from the format of the file. Uh, and it knows which table uh, uh, each section is. And so it automatically sets these tables. Um, and uh, if you have other formatted Excel files and so on, this is a system of where you can uh, set the headers and so on. Um, and if you're interested in that, there's a demo on the website um, that shows you how to do that, or I'm happy to help people one-on-one -on -one over Zoom, et cetera, or email. Um, so all of these tables uh, have been uh, imported correctly. Uh, if not, there would be a, a red error and you wouldn't be able to go to the next step. So I'm going to upload this into my private workspace. So I'll just call this AGU demo. And here you can see um, it's one location, there's uh, 95 measurements, various summary information. And now you've got this uh, into your private workspace. Um, if you enter the DOI, all of the bibliography, uh, bibliographic information will be downloaded from data site. So here, here's the thing, uh, when you're working with journals, uh, they might want to have the data published before the journal article is published. Um, but uh, we've made arrangements with AGU and Nature and others journals uh, the, that uh, once the journal is published and the data DOI for that uh, journal paper is available in data site, then uh, the data can be published. And that usually only takes uh, an hour to a day, depending on the journal and so on. So um, if you have any problems with journals, just uh, send me an email and uh, we can contact the journal and, and uh, they're, they're pretty, pretty flexible on that. So Nick, so, I have a about yeah, Lisa? Um, what about ESOR? ESS, uh, the Open Archive yeah. preprint server, that gives you a DOI. Would that count for magic? I believe so, but I mean, if it has a data DOI, it's probably in data side. I think that would work. Yes. Well, it has a DOI for the preprint, which hasn't necessarily been peer reviewed or anything, but if it's in on ESOR, it has a preprint. And so we could, check, we could check that and see. Away. Usually, usually the preprints don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that, Lisa. That's something to look into. DOI. So I, I'll test it. I'll try it. Yeah, yeah, you can try that out. Um, so now that you've got to this point, um, you can set the laboratory name. Uh, Here and this is uh, if you set this, then you're able to. Um, there and the uh, the EPOS uh, group in Europe uses this uh, in their data portal, which we're uh, collaborating with. So, and it's also nice to have uh, for people to know where the data is coming from. Uh, and the next thing that you would want to do, you can add a description in here, describing the data if you like, and then validate. So this passed validation successfully. Um, if there was problems with your data set, uh, there would be errors here that would tell you the table 
and the row of uh, the column and the row uh, where there was a problem. Uh, then you can go back to the, uh, the source data, uh, fix those, uh, re-upload, and uh, check your validation again. Once you finish that, then uh, it's ready to be made public. Um, so if you click on this, you get a warning. Uh, and uh, click that, then it'll go on to the public uh, site at Magic. And uh, that's my presentation. Any questions? So Wape, what, uh, what sort of uh, data analysis software do you guys use? Uh, we are currently um, using our own MATLAB codes. Um, right. Yeah, so, so it's, it's not, not very standardized and we're currently uh, working into making it a, a standard uh, thing. And we used to make, um, we used to uh, use that PMAG X, uh, that, that like an old analyzing yeah. software, but uh, after yeah, the upgrade of the Mac system, it seems that it does not work anymore. So, so, so we are using our own MATLAB codes. So if you have your own MATLAB code, I mean, what you can do is, you know, write code in there that, mm -hmm. that exports to create a, a magic formatted file. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to, to work with you on that. Uh, I've done yeah, that, that with other that, groups. And, yeah, that would be great. Uh, and and uh, we can go through the tables and tell you how it maps from your data variables to the magic columns. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a very iterative process where you try it out and then some things aren't right. Yeah, that, that would, would be great. And that especially for our, um, multi-domain corrected the pill intensity data since it's not a very standardized. So we need to uh, figure out uh, maybe some new data model to write yeah. uh, you know, the data. Um, we're willing to add new columns if we feel that it's uh, necessary and uh, gonna be useful for, for people. So, mm -hmm. data, what you'll need is special metadata, the method codes. And I can, I can okay. work with you on that, Wape. Yeah, I, I think uh, you guys have already put the WK or BZF method code in the database uh, already. Um, yeah, we just uh, checked and then we found that like a WK method code uh, stands for the multi-domain correction. Um, yeah, if there's any other ones that you need, um, they, I can put those in there quite quickly. Okay, okay. At least it can help you. Um, yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Nick. And sure. Lisa. Yeah, and I'd like to put um, the conversion scripts for your data into PMAGPI so other people uh -huh. who do the same method could. Yes. You know, yes, and uh, we are currently thinking of uh, uh, writing our. Uh, own GUI program to do that, but yeah. uh, it may be easier that uh, uh, you can help us just just uh, to use the, uh, the 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 already like a pale intensity GUI that you guys have, and then try to uh, use that same GUI to analyze the multi-domain corrected data. That that will be very very helpful for. for or us. we could start with just a notebook version, um, mm -hmm. very simple and easy to debug, and much easier than GUIs to write. Right. I think yeah, you figures and everything, then you can stick them into a GUI. Yes, that would be great. That so be great. yeah, once if you have if you have your data outputted into the MATIC format, then we can have PMAGPI programs that work with that file format to do that. So that's right. Then we can use notebooks to display it and analyze it and so on. So that's sort of that's sort of how we're hoping that the science will go. Mm -hmm. People can create these notebooks and use the PMAGPI uh, software functions to analyze uh, analyze the data and uh, 
have those notebooks as part of your paper also so yeah. people can, yeah. can see how it was all done. And that's sort of the paper of the future, as they say. Yes, yes. Way to do things. Yeah, but they yes. just start and then be like Telia Gui, you can make it Guape uh, Gui. One Gui. And um, or we could, because the way that you visualize things is so different than the way Telia Gui visualizes things. Uh, it's like yeah. um, Yuji Yamamoto has his own way of doing things. And I have a, a notebook that will produce his style plots and all his calculations and magic formatted data and all of that. And, and it's pretty straightforward. We could do the same thing for yours um, mm -hmm. with a notebook. And then if you want to make a GUI out of it, it's, it's, uh, it's easier. I see, I see. We can talk 